Hello, I'm Zenofit and welcome to another video on the TechQuest. These days, when you want fantastic gaming performance, you'll probably end up buying something from AMD. They're fast, well priced, and in the last two years in particular, absolutely wiped the floor with the competition. But it's not always been this way. In the early 2010s and right up until the release of AMD's Ryzen, if you wanted a gaming processor, your only real choice was an Intel chip. Today I'm going to be taking a look at one of those processors, the Intel Core i5-4590. Released in the middle of 2014, the Core i5-4590 is a socket LJ1150 processor featuring 4 cores and 4 threads. Clocked in at a respectable 3.3GHz, with boost running up to 3.7GHz where ideal conditions allow, the i5-4590 also features 6 megs of R3 cache. It was at the time a solid processor for gaming, but how does it stack up today? In my testing today, I've paired the i5 up with a Gigabyte H81 MS2V motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR3 1600MHz RAM running in dual channel, and added in the GeForce GTX 1650, the same card we used for the Athlon 950 in my last video, but we'll circle around to that a little later. The rest of the specs are similar to my Pentium G3258 review, we've got Windows and newer games running from SSDs, and a 2TB mechanical drive for older games that don't really care too much about what they run from. I didn't pay anything for this processor as it was given to me, but you can expect to pick one of these up for around a fiver today. Coupled with the motherboard, RAM and graphics card, you could probably build something similar for around the £60 mark, maybe less if you focus on auctions rather than buy it now prices, unlike the Athlon 950. We're going back to ultimate performance and the absolute best the Core i5-4590 can do, so get ready for numbers, we've got a lot to cover today, so without further delay, let's get to it. We start off as always with Fallout 4. At 1080p and using the game's medium preset, the i5 managed absolutely fine here, with solid overall performance providing a great experience on this decade plus old processor, it's really hard to believe that it's that old. Fallout is a lot easier to run these days, but I like to test it as it's one of my favourites, and for testing purposes, it's evergreen. People always want to see how it performs, no matter how long it has been out. Average was 59.9 FPS, with 1% coming in at 58.6, and 0.1% at 13.8, which is okay, it's a good start. The Division 2 is next. In my last video, we saw some of the worst performance I'd ever seen on the Athlon X4950, and testing it again today is an absolute night and day difference between the processors. For a quick reminder, I'm adding in a little Athlon footage for comparison. Massive CPU bottleneck during gameplay here. On a personal note, I have several thousand hours in the Division 2, and I don't ever recall seeing performance so poor that the world doesn't even load in around you, and this was despite the game running from an SSD. And as you can see here, the numbers speak for themselves as a Core i5-4590 delivers an excellent level of performance, even in the percentile figures. The Division 2 on the 4590 was a smooth, enjoyable experience right the way through. Average was 67.8 FPS, with 1 and 0.1% figures coming in at 39.5 and 31 exactly, respectively. It's light years better than the Athlon 950. The 4590 once again flattens the Athlon 950 in performance in Grand Theft Auto V Legacy. At 1080p and using the high preset, the Core i5 delivered an exceptional result, and GTA V was once again a smooth, enjoyable experience without issue. If you bought the i5-4590 back in the day, I can imagine you were absolutely satisfied with the excellent performance that continues to this day. I played for about half an hour, and it was an enjoyable session throughout, with an average of 82.5 FPS and solid percentile lows to back it up. 1% at 53.2 and 0.1% coming in at 36.7 FPS, so you're in for a real consistent experience here. Frostpunk is next, and 1080p and using the medium preset. Once again, the magic 60 FPS cap from nowhere makes an appearance. I have no idea how this keeps on cropping up, but I won't spend too much time here again as a result of that cap. Frostpunk runs near flawlessly on the Core i5, with very minor deviation from a 60 FPS presentation on occasion, but it runs great. Red Dead Redemption returned good numbers, but performance wasn't as smooth as the numbers suggest. At 1080p and using the default settings, the Core i5 delivered an average frame rate of 113.3 FPS, but the game had some issues with micro stuttering that made it a little difficult to get immersed in. I actually think this is being caused by running the processor at maximum here, and like the G3258 I initially reviewed, feel that it would benefit from a force cap to make the game smoother overall without taxing the i5 as hard. Percentile figures are just about okay, but again that micro stuttering just wouldn't shake. 1% was 21.9 FPS and 0.1% was 19 on the dot. I'd say cap this to 60 FPS and expect better results. Red Dead Redemption 2 had no such issues. At 1080p and using the medium preset, the 4590 delivered at a level similar to the Xbox One version of the game, even in towns such as Valentine. In the outback, performance would increase to the 50s, those towns and cities did bring us down close to the Xbox One version of the game. It was plenty playable though, and I had no issues in my half hour or so with it. You can expect to have a great time on both the i5-4590 and the GeForce GTX 1650. Average was 38.0 with 1% coming in at 23.1 and 0.1% at 19. 
Borderlands 2 was also a solid experience. It still caused some issues for our Athlon 950 in the last video. No such issues this time on the Core i5 though, and it made light work of Borderlands 2. Average was an excellent 127, with the 1% low being 62.9. The 0.1% percentile figure was skewed by a slight stutter at the start of my testing, at just 3.8 FPS, but this doesn't actually feel indicative of how well Borderlands 2 actually performed. Moving on to The Witcher 3, another good performer is up now. At 1080 p and using the medium preset, Core i5 4590 once again gave us a game that was more than playable, with an average of 66.6 FPS. It wasn't perfect, and there were occasional performance dips during my playtime, but these were not significant and you could play absolutely fine like this. Centaur figures were on the low side at just 6.4 and 4.1 FPS for the 1 and 0.1% low, but as you can see from the gameplay though, those numbers feel like they're lower than the actual performance we really saw, so I'm not sure what's going on here. Counter Strike 2 comes up next. Apologies first off, I forgot to run the benchmarking on this one, so the lack of numbers here is entirely on me. As you can see here though, at 1080p and using the default options, Counter Strike 2 is plenty playable enough with a frame rate that hovered around the 80 to 90 FPS mark, although triple digits wasn't unusual to see either. It's a great performer, all the more impressive considering how bloated the game has gotten over time, and it still runs great on the Core i5. Metro Last Light was another easy one for the Core i5 4590. At 1080p and using the game's medium preset, we could honestly have cranked those settings up a little higher with the numbers we saw on medium. Average was an excellent 192.8 FPS, with 1% and 0.1% at 114.7 and 44.4 FPS respectively. My advice? Crank up those settings and enjoy post-apocalyptic Moscow. But how about something a little newer? Dying Light 2, another personal favourite of mine, ran really well. As with all newer games, the 4590 will start showing its age, especially without hyperthreading, but it still puts on a good show. At 1080p and using the medium preset with FSR enabled and set to balanced, Dying Light 2 managed a respectable 40.3 FPS on the 4590. Interestingly enough, I think we were actually being held back a little bit here by the GTX 1650. So while I wouldn't really recommend you pay much higher than this, a better card would deliver better results here too, as the i5 still had a little more to give. Centaur figures were good, if nothing spectacular, 1% at 34.2 and 0.1% at 24.9. So the performance can best be described as consistent, even if we're not near 60 FPS. This is really not a bad result at all though. Let's take a look at Metro Exodus, the standard version of the game. At 1080p and using the game's medium preset, Exodus was another good performer with excellent numbers, and overall just really enjoyable to play, even on older hardware such as this. Average was 88.6 FPS, with percentile figures being 52.9, and 39.1 for the 1% and 0.1% respectively. It ran great, looks great, and overall, I think you're in for a real treat. Next up is Marvel Rivals, a free-to-play game. For this test, I allowed the shaders to compile, which results in better overall performance, and something I think a lot of people playing the game regularly would do, so this feels like a more accurate test. At 1080p and using the low preset with FSR set to balanced, Rivals actually ran pretty well overall, although, as you can imagine by the age of the 4590, it wasn't perfect. Average was 75.8 FPS, but there were frequent drops below 60, as we really are pushing both the CPU and GPU quite hard here. 1% was 20.3, with 0.1% coming in at a little low 7.3 FPS. It was more than playable despite those numbers though. Horizon Zero Dawn is our penultimate game today. At 1080p and using the game's low preset with FSR set to performance, we saw pretty good performance overall. I'm not entirely sure what happened to the video capture quality here, but the game looked decent, and with an average of 82.8 FPS, it ran great too. Percentile figures were okay, if nothing spectacular again. 1% was 56.9 FPS, with a 0.1% being on the low side at 10.2 FPS. And finally today, Saints Row 3 Remastered. At 1080p and using the medium preset, Saints Row 3 was pretty decent, although its overall consistency wasn't perfect. There were occasional drops, and at least three occasions in my 20 minutes where the game stuttered despite being run from an SSD, possibly GPU related, as we were pretty close to maxing out the 1650 in my playtime here. Average was 85.6 FPS, with the percentile figures coming in at 24.2 and 13.4 FPS for the 1 and 0.1% figures respectively. And that's a wrap for today. The Core i5 4590 then. Back when this processor was doing the rounds, Intel were top dog. How times have changed since then of course. But the Core i5 4590 is a good example of what Intel used to do best. The Core i5 4590 is a great processor, as evidenced by the fact that its performance is still so fantastic over a decade later. It might struggle on the newer games, of games have asked for more cores over time, but even then it can still just about do a lot of them. We saw a couple of weeks ago how newer AMD processors than the Core i5 haven't stood up to the test of time, which speaks volumes of the strength of Intel's architecture. 
Intel may not be held in the same light now for a number of reasons, mostly of their own doing, but back then these were the chips you wanted to own. It's a solid, energy efficient processor that even today stands up in a lot of newer games. Best of all, you can pick up the 4590 specifically for around a fiver, add in a cheap 1150 board, some DDR3 memory and you have a surprisingly capable machine that can handle your day-to-day -day tasks as if it had just rolled off the assembly line. And that in itself is no mean feat. Add in a decent card, maybe a GTX 1660 Super or a Push or similar, and you have a surprisingly capable machine that will still run your games 11 years after it came out. And it's really hard to find the bad side of a processor that still performs as good as this so long after its release. My PC building history is remarkably AMD centric. But if I had picked this up on launch, I'd absolutely feel that I was getting more than my money's worth out of the Core i5-4590. It's a great little chip for absolutely no money at all, and I've really enjoyed using it for my time with this video. The Core i5-4590 is Intel at their best. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me in my next video, where I'll be testing the AMD Athlon 3000G. I look forward to seeing you all there. I've been Zonal here, and thank you for watching the Tech Quest. Until next time, bye-bye.